look at that, y'all. Look at that. Your girl did that. The big question. Does these taste like the Auntie Anne's pretzels, the original pretzels? What's up, JT? Welcome back to the channel. What's up? Go ahead and like this video if you're just loving the title, okay? Because we really about to get into some things here. Growing up, whenever I would go to the mall, back in my hometown, North Carolina, there was one place I stopped at, no matter what. Auntie Anne, okay? Auntie Anne's pretzels. Since moving to Texas, I've been more hit in the face with wet so pretzel, okay? That's new to me. It was I. But it wasn't nope. Auntie Anne's, okay? Maybe we should do a taste test down the road, but nothing hits better than that Auntie Anne's. And I'm not even sure if the ingredients are the same, if they're different. I don't even know if they taste different. I just know that that Auntie Anne's, that Auntie Anne's hit different, okay? I did some research and I found the leaked recipe. And hopefully at the end of this, it tastes exactly like Auntie Anne's. I'll be following this recipe to the T, okay? Hopefully, we get us some good bristles, okay? Hopefully. The girl's having a bad hair day. That's why I had to throw this hat on, y'all. I had to throw this hat on. One and one half cup of water, and we're going to sprinkle in the yeast. Stir until it dissolves. So one pack of this, like if you have this at the store, one pack should be the right amount. Under this leaked recipe, a lot of people did of course try it and some people were just like, oh, mine turned out like this, mine turned out runny, mine turned out too stiff. So I'm over here just like, okay. Pouring the yeast into the water and stir. Let me see, is that what it say? We're gonna stir this until it dissolves. And then we're gonna be adding some salt and some sugar. By the way, this is active dry yeast, okay? This is not that yeast that's gonna take all day. If you wanna do this in a mixing bowl, you can. I use the measuring cup. You're gonna now pour it in the mixing bowl. I wish I had a clear mixing bowl so y'all could see. Adding two tablespoons of brown sugar. One and one fourth teaspoon of salt. Go ahead and stir it. I'm using a whisk just because I really want to break it down. Once it's fully dissolved, it's time to add in the flour. Now look, you're gonna be using all-purpose flour and bread flour. I heard it's very important to use bread flour. Very important, I mean, we are making bread so makes sense add flour and knead dough until smooth and elastic okay one cup of bread flour three cups of regular flour the bread flour i'm going to fold it in first and then i'm going to um knead it in okay Now that it looks like this, I'm gonna start kneading it. Be like this. Like it's supposed to be this tough. Oh, okay, it's starting to get there. It's starting to get there. At first I'm like, oh my gosh, it feels so dry. But it's starting to get there now. It doesn't tell me how long to do this. It just says until it's smooth and elastic. This is reminding me of when I made pasta from scratch. That was so much fun. If you haven't checked out my homemade pasta video, wrote a clip just so y'all can see. Whoo, this is getting a little tough. How do you know if your dough is elastic enough? Take off a piece it says and stretch it between fingers. If the dough tears, it hasn't developed enough, okay. Well, let's go ahead and keep on. Whoo, I'm getting a little workout. 
Get a little workout in over here. A little arm workout. Woo! A few moments later. While your dough is off to the side, prepare your baking soda bath, okay? Two cups of water, two tablespoons of baking soda. Put it up in there. Twenty minutes later. The dough is ready. As you can see, it's much bigger. Um, it's time for the fun part. A little nervous because I'm telling you like this is a science either it's gonna be right or it's gonna be wrong there you know there is not much wiggle room this is how I'm gonna be making my pretzels because you know when you go to these places you either are ordering like the um the nuggets the actual pretzel or you're getting like a pizza pretzel or the jalapeno pretzel or you're ordering like the cinnamon butter pretzel which we gonna do that pinch off bits of dough and roll it into a long rope I'm gonna make the nuggets so I'm pretty sure they just kind of like chop it up I'm gonna spray this pan Because we're going to have to let this rise again, okay? This is somewhat of a process here. Okay, so I rolled it out as thin as I believe it should be. And now I'm just going to cut it in the same shapes that I see the nuggets. Like, I'm pretty sure this is what they do. In this copycat recipe, they don't, they don't go into that much detail. And now gonna give this a stir this is the baking soda bath let me make sure I'm pretty sure all you need is baking soda dip the pretzel in the soda solution and place on a greased baking sheet allow pretzels to rise again okay now the thing is how long do we put them in here you know what let's just move fast I probably need a fork and now I'm just gonna put them on here Looking good, looking good. I feel good about this. Remember, it does say stir occasionally. And now I'm gonna pinch off some more dough. Uh, and roll it out. I'm trying to make sure to roll it out. Okay, I think that's good enough. And again, I'm gonna cut it. Gonna pop these in to the baking soda bath and take them out. I'm curious to know how much bigger these are gonna get. So I have a little bit more room over here. So I think we can squeeze in one more batch. So again, take the dough and roll it out. This is pretty easy. I think the only thing is just having to be patient. The kneading, that took a minute, okay? I had to learn different techniques on how to get it to um, be very smooth and elastic. Hopefully, I did it the way it needed to be. Stir the baking soda. Go ahead and cut your pieces. Drop them in, take them out. Okay, so they're gonna get bigger. Hopefully just not too big. Hopefully it just keeps its shape and they don't run into each other. I heard if you're doing the regular pretzel shape, um, you really wanna make sure to have your measurements down pat and leave a lot of space in between the swoops and the loops. But we're not doing that, we could. Now, it's time to let them rise and move on to the next step. Okay, so I am going to attempt the uh, traditional pretzel shape. I don't even know what to do first. Wait, hold on. I feel like I, ha I had something. Oh, yeah. That's how you do it? Okay, hold on. Hold on. Loop it and then twist. Right here. And then bring it down. 
It look kind of funny. But you know what? It don't look bad. It do look like the picture. Boom. Whoa, that look bad. Ooh. That don't look too bad now. That look good. Proud. Last bit right here. Okay, so I forgot. We have to dip it in the baking soda. Ooh, that's messy. Do a little twist, 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 twist. And then take it down. That looks good. Oh yeah, that looks good. Ooh. All right, so I have my pretzels. Now gotta let them rise. Hopefully it still keeps its shape. Some people in the comments were saying that theirs did not keep shape. Hopefully mine keeps shape. Now it's time to let them bake, okay? We are at the home stretch. It is time. So the oven is preheated on 420 and I'm gonna leave these in for eight minutes. Really, I'm just gonna keep an eye out on them. If they look done, then they're done. Okay, so when I order my pretzels, I order them unsalted. Yes, unsalted, y'all. I do not like those big chunks. <laughs> I do not like those big chunks of salt on my pretzels. They're buttery and good enough on their own. They're good enough with some butter or some cheese on the side or cinnamon and sugar. I don't like mine with that big chunk of uh, salt, okay? They're out. They look really, really good. They look really, really good. I just hope they're nice and soft, okay? That's what I'm hoping for. So I'm gonna brush them with butter. Added some cinnamon, a little pinch of salt, and some sugar. And I'm going to coat some of these. That looks so good. Y'all, I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted to go in right now. This was a moment. There you go, like this. But I know this is gonna hit. Like, I already know. Look at that, y'all. Look, look at that. Your girl did that. I'm gonna put this one right here. Oh, I should have added some jalapenos on that one. Now I'm gonna add a few. This looks so good, y'all. Oh my gosh, I wanna taste one. Pretzels with butter, no salt. That's how I order mine. I don't add that big old clunks of salt on my pretzels. The cinnamon, which is just cinnamon and sugar. Classic, but it was coated first with the butter that's on these. I know those gonna hit. And then we have the classic pretzel that just, it just looks good, but it is missing a little something. Like I guess I could have put pepperonis or the jalapenos on this but that's okay. Definitely going for the butter first. Ooh, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm, yes. Mm. Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. It's so soft in the middle. Let me get a little bit of butter. Mm. There's a little bit more. I did that, y'all. And I did this on a bad hair day, honey. I did this on a bad, rustic, rusty day. The cinnamon and sugar. Okay, make me a believer. Let's see. Mm-hmm, yeah. Listen, a drizzle? Why didn't I make like a sugar icing drizzle? Powdered sugar. Oh yeah. That little pinch of salt on a cinnamon and the sugar, the mix. Oh. oh. Sometimes you gotta clap for yourself. Sometimes you can't wait to be celebrated. You gotta celebrate yourself, okay? <laughs> oh, it's so soft and squishy on the back. Don't let the front fool you. It is very soft. Mm-hmm, yeah. Oh my goodness. Now, this 
one could have used salt. If you're gonna be adding salt to these pretzels, make sure to add them before you bake them so they can really get up in there. Should have did more with this. These are just enough because it's smaller and it holds flavor. The big question, does these taste like the Auntie Anne's pretzels, the original pretzels? Hmm. They taste very similar. I do believe there's a little bit of something that is missing and I think it could be the amount of butter that they use because when you bite into theirs, the butter is kind of like just gushing out in a way. Like I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just so good. These are good, but they're a little bit more uh, firm. So maybe I just cooked them a little bit too long. Don't forget to like this video. Big shout out to the J team. If you want to shout out like them, all you have to do is click subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and let me know below. And that's it. Make sure to be bold, brave, and beautiful. And I will catch y'all in my next video. Bye. Oh. Mm.